As we've been discussing, the U.S. is increasing its military presence in the Middle East. The Biden administration continues to call for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. Right now, Israel is bracing for possible retaliatory attacks from Iran over the recent killings of Hamas and Hezbollah leaders. Ceasefire negotiations are expected to resume in Egypt or Qatar Thursday. In a joint statement last week, leaders from the two countries and the Biden administration said they are prepared to present a, quote, final bridging proposal to end the war and urge both sides to attend the discussion. John Alderman joins us from Washington. He's the senior vice president and director of the Middle East program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. John, thank you so much for joining us with these final ceasefire proposals expected Thursday. Could anything change if Israel is attacked by Iran or Hezbollah before then? I mean, we've been talking about a ceasefire for quite some time. Well, and, and it's not clear that Hamas wants to attend the talks at all. Uh, I think the odds that the talks are going to go ahead and be successful are low already. If there is a large-scale Iranian response, I think the odds go from low to remarkably low because Israel is going to be completely preoccupied with, with fighting against the Iranians, who, after all, had been supporting Hamas before October 7th and, from the Israeli perspective, are responsible for the Hamas attack of October 7th. How do you think an increased U.S. military presence in this region helps? Well, from an Iranian perspective, the Iranians are trying to thread a needle that they want to send a message to the Israelis that they can hurt Israel, but they don't want to kick off a large-scale war. I think the, the Iranians are concerned that either they could invite a large-scale attack from the United States in response to an Iranian attack, or that the U.S. could render the Iranian attack uh, ineffectual, which is what happened to the Iranian attack in April. If the Iranians say, we're going to pull out all the stops, and Israel and the alliance that the United States has built in the region neutralizes what the Iranians can do, rather than look strong, the Iranians end up looking weak. Does this take away, ultimately, of you know the, the bigger message of trying to bring home hostages and protect as many civilians? Well, from the perspective of Prime Minister Netanyahu, he doesn't want to seem too eager to bring home the hostages. Don't forget the negotiations over Gilad Shalit, the corporal that Hamas kidnapped in 2006, took five years. I think for a lot of Israelis, there's an urgency to bring home the hostages, bring them home alive. But everything we've seen out of Prime Minister Netanyahu is he is not going to, to be urgent, in, or he will be urgent, but he's not going to be over eager. He is going to ensure that through the, this process, he destroys Hamas militarily and politically. And if it means leaving the hostages in Gaza longer, he's willing to do that. A lot of Israelis, including his defense minister, say that's not the right policy, and we're seeing increasing tensions. And because of that sort of clashing with his defense ministry that you, you just spoke of, I mean, what do you make of that in terms of how you move ahead with talks of a potential ceasefire, um, especially when you think about the number of, of innocent uh, Palestinians that, that are dying every day? Well, the, the tensions between Netanyahu and his defense minister started long before the Hamas war. He tried to fire the defense minister in March 2023. There were large-scale protests he had to keep him on. There have been any number of reports of tensions in the cabinet between them. I think the defense minister's feeling is we can get what we need to by moving back into Gaza. Let's get the hostages home and let's move this on. And Netanyahu's feeling is we will do this until Hamas is completely destroyed. And that means we have to keep doing what we're doing. And, and that's just, a, a, frankly, a, a strong difference of opinion between two well-informed and very strong-willed individuals at the top of Israel's government. Yeah, and only one is the prime minister there. So and one is like... the prime minister, and he says he's the boss. Yeah, exactly. John Alterman, we thank you for your time.